Aircraft tyres are designed to carry heavy loads at high speeds, in the smallest and lightest configurations practical, but this means they're subjected to enormous pressures and friction. They're highly engineered structures. They carry weights similar to the tyres on the largest earth movers, but at the speed of a Formula One car. Pound for pound, they endure the harshest service life of any tyre made. On takeoff, the load on aircraft tyres makes them heat up to temperatures of between 130 and 150 degrees centigrade. Dunlop Aircraft Tyres in Birmingham has been designing and making aircraft tyres since 1910. They hand make tyres for all types of aircraft, from jumbos to Harrier jump jets. They carry out rigorous tests that push aircraft tyres to more than four times their operational safety limits. To ensure they can withstand all the stresses they might undergo, they're tested on a dynamometer that simulates taxiing, takeoff, and landing conditions. But the most impressive test is when tyres are overinflated in the burst cell. So, Nick, what's the purpose of this test? Well, this is to check the uh, strength of the casing. This particular tyre is off a Boeing 737. It's a main wheel tyre and it's rated to 220 PSI. Right, wow. So what we need to do, we need to get to 880 PSI, and we'll probably go beyond that. We'll probably get to around about 1,000. And I assume we're putting air in here, are we? No, no, we, we can't use air. We have to use water. If we used air, the, the volume of air that would be generated in here would cause a tremendous bang, and right. it would probably destroy most of the surrounding buildings. <laughs> The last time an aircraft tyre was overinflated with gas here at Dunlop was in the 1960s, and here's what's happened. It's never been done since. Overinflating aircraft tyres to more than four times their normal pressure is an extremely dangerous business, so Richard and Johnny have to retire to a safe distance and watch the action on a monitor. It takes nearly 10 minutes to fill the tyre to just its normal operating pressure of 220 PSI. Gosh, the anticipation's killing me. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah. To overinflate the tyre, the water pressure is stepped up a gear and is pumped hydraulically into the casing. I'm not missing this moment. No. I'm, <laughs> I'm glued to Yeah, this don't look away, because you know if you if, do. This is, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see this. <laughs> The pressure is building. Nick, how are we doing on pressure? We're, we've reached the minimum that we require. We've done 880, are we? Yeah, we have, yeah. I think we're probably about 900. We're, we're coming up to 900. Oh! 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was it bursting. <laughs> well, Richard may have missed it, but you won't. <laughs> We're at 905 PSI. Yeah. So 905? Because like when I turn around to you... Wow! Look at that! Destroyed! Yeah, <laughs> that's a typical burst that happens on cross fly tyres. By reaching over four times its normal operating pressure before bursting, and even then still retaining its basic form, this type of aircraft tyre has proved that it has the strength and integrity to cope with extreme situations. Very reassuring in the event of an emergency landing. Is there any way we can fill one with custard? <laughs> oh, that would be a good idea, yes. 